Welcome to Chefing Beyond the Kitchen. I'm your host, Marao. Join us for conversations with amazing people doing amazing things in food. Welcome back to Chefing Beyond the Kitchen. Today I am uber excited to be chatting to my good friend, Dale. Welcome. Hey, my friend. <laughs> this is incredible. I'm so incredibly proud of you. Thank you. Friend. Thank you for having me. And thank, thank you so you much for me. making the time. I'm so excited to get into it. So excited for everyone to hear your story, which is so, so incredible. So yeah. inspiring. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I feel like sometimes um, we don't really get to share our stories and you've given our, I even got gooses when I speak about it, but <laughs> you've given our industry a platform to, to have a voice, to communicate. So thank you. Yeah. Ever charming, Dale. <laughs> that is him. <laughs> honest, just being honest, my friend. Being Thank honest. you. So let's jump straight into it. I'm going to ask a few icebreakers just to get us in the mood. Okay. And then we'll jump into the meat of the conversation. Perfect. I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready. <laughs> when is the last time you smiled and what made you smile? Uh, me walking to studio this morning seeing you. <laughs> that That's a good reason smile. to smile. <laughs> Before that, it's normally anything that has to do with food, mm -hmm. generally. <laughs> so when I eat something really yummy or really amazing, um, yeah, I get very emotional when I eat. So probably when I ate a really good meal last. Yeah. And, and what meal was that? So I recently just came back from Cape Town and I've never been to a restaurant called Upper Union. Um, and I had the cheek, the, the, the cheese course there, and it was so sublime. It was incredible. It was a creme brulee cheese course, uh -huh. so you kind of broke the cheesy crust, had so. melted cheese underneath with cheese gratings, with a, I think it was a ginger cracker. And I was like, how is this even possible? This Genius. is incredible. Yeah, so, so I definitely found myself smiling and, and being really happy when I have good food. That's amazing. I, I mean, just as we're getting into the conversation, I can tell your passion for food. Um, yeah. You're such a credit to this industry, thank I must you. say. Thank you, thank you. And what is, what is your favorite thing right now, besides eating? Favorite thing, can that be anything? Anything in the world. Sure, my favorite thing. Um, my favorite thing, I, I would probably say music is my next go-to after food. Mm -hmm. um, so lately I've been listening to a lot of Sisi Wannings. People don't know deep down that I really, in my next life, want to be a gospel star. <laughs> I um, believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I absolutely have such a passion for the gospel industry. Mm -hmm. um, so my, 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 my favorite thing right now is just curating incredible gospel playlists. And it's what keeps me going. It's the first thing I do in the morning is I put on a song. It's the last thing I do in the evening. It's amazing. And three people you would want to host for dinner and why? And because it's you, I'm going to ask what's going to be on that dinner table. Wow. You should have prepped me for this question. <laughs> um, who, who, who would be at my dinner table? Um, so I don't want to get emotional when I say this, but probably my gran. Mm -hmm. um, she, she's 85, 86 now, I think. She stays in London. I haven't seen her for about five years. Mm -hmm. So definitely my gran. Um, yeah, I would definitely say you. Um, you know, I think we, we've also shared an incredibly personal journey together. Mm -hmm. I was there before you did your first book. I mean, just came out of corporate. Okay, now you're making me so, want to cry. So, so I think for me, for, for, for me, moments around food is around conversation. So mm -hmm. I would want to invite people to my dinner table mm -hmm. where I'm going to learn and where I can share life experience. So that's incredibly important for me always. Um, also the reason why I love meeting new people. And then the third person, and maybe it might, might be a bit of a cheesy choice, but I probably really would want to invite Oprah. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe everyone uses that, but I grew up listening to her. She kept me going. She attacked, um, you know, topics that maybe were scared to have as young kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone who maybe, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously not straight. So, so Oprah was, was a big part of my life growing up. Mm. Um, and I think listening to her, she was almost like my auntie, you know, like, 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 like the aunt in the background that believes yeah. in you. She says you can do it. So imagine a table, my gran, Mokhao, AKA Les Makoti, Oprah at a dinner table. It'll probably be sharing plates. Yeah. My favorite style of food is sharing plates um, or, or Sunday lunch. I love a good fine dining meal, but 
give me seven or eight homely plates um, yeah. and, and, and that's dinner for me. Um, my favorite cuisine is Mediterranean, Indian, or some South African. So um, maybe one day I'll get to, to, to curate and, and host you. I love it. I, I hope you make that happen. Oh, oh that would be incredible. Um, so now let's get straight into it. Um, for someone that's watching, they've never heard of Dale. Um, what is what is it that you do, particularly at your company? Okay. Who is Dale? Who is Dale? It's also such a large question, which I which I love. Um, so, okay, let's talk Dale um, in terms of his career. Okay, career first. Yeah. So, so, so currently, and I have been at that food guy for six years. I'm the founder of that food guy group. Mm -hmm. We're a food and beverage marketing agency, proudly South African, which I have to note yes. because we really have a, a, a passion and our purpose is to um, really honor and represent the South African food and beverage landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently the chief creative officer and the CEO of the Fuga Group. We have multiple different divisions and companies underneath that, mm -hmm. but our, our main um, service and our main offering is food marketing, mm -hmm. which is quite niche in some regard, mm -hmm. um, but, it, but, but marketing is not new, you know, but I think the concept of having a unique and dedicated food and beverage marketing agency is 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 quite unique um, and it's been wow what an incredible journey the past six years it's been absolutely phenomenal mm -hmm. um yeah and then recently about two years ago we added an innovation section to our marketing company mm -hmm. where we have three four qualified chefs we have a nutritionist um, and we offer food research we offer menu development recipe development we do testing um, we be constantly in the know of South African trends uh, and, 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 and just really being in touch with the South African food and beverage market so we can take that back to our clients and create relevant content. Yeah, and, and you're right to say that marketing is very broad. So why food? Why decide to zone in on food? So, so my, my very spiritual answer to that question is that I didn't choose food. I, I think choose definitely chose, I mean, food chose me. Yeah. Um, I definitely did not choose this. I didn't wake up one day and went, I'm going to open this because there's a gap in the market mm. that I definitely didn't do that. Um, I, I think often one has to understand your life or, or the back history to understand how I got here, right? And many things have happened in my life to get me to this point. Mm. Um, definitely food has always been part of my life growing up. My family are all cooks. Um, I've got chefs in my family. All the guys and the ladies in my family can all cook really good meals. Um, my mom's an incredible, incredible home cook. Yeah. My gran. I remember as a kid, my grandfather, you know, he, he, he was my restaurant guy. So I really got to eat stuff like prawns and all these fancy things. Um, at the age of maybe seven, you know, I, I see pictures in my, in my baby albums of me eating all these fancy foods. So I think I had multiple layers of inspiration mm. from, from, from the time I grew up all the way through. But who knew that I would formalize this love for food and beverage into an actual company? For me, you know, if, if, even driving to today, I just thought, is this even still real? So, so, so sometimes it actually doesn't feel real to me. Mm. Um, it definitely is, it's, it's something that's been given to me, I believe by God, um, and I have to actively work at growing it. Um, so, so, so it's beyond me just being a strategist and deciding that this would be a good idea. This is, this is a universal thing. That's amazing, yeah. friend. So, so take me back to the very beginning, um, your early career. Mm. Um, how did you even get into this career mm. calling, your upbringing? How did Dale become Dale? Dale. Um, so, so I grew up in a small town, Springs, on the east end of Joburg, mm -hmm. um, a small uh, gold mining town. Um, and, and I think most, not most, but I think a lot of small town people grow up there and they don't know what it's like to be in a big city. Yeah. So I grew up there until the age of 12, um, single mom who worked incredibly hard um, with my grandparents to, to put me through private schooling. Mm -hmm. my, my, my grandfather passed away in, in my early teens. Um, and then my family decided that boarding school was the best idea for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I then moved to Johannesburg and the big city. And I think that was quite a, an important moment in my life. And you know, I think spending my teens in boarding school, um, also had a lot of food inspiration, right? I was best friends with a matron at my boarding house. 
Nice. And before dinner, I was in that kitchen um, seeing all the desserts. She made roly poly, she made malva. So when I say my life has had many different food influences, mm. I really mean that from the time I've grown up all the way through to boarding school. Um, so, so, so grew up in Springs, I went to high school in Johannesburg, uh, JP Boys, and then from there, wasn't really sure what I wanted to study. Mm. Um, I then decided to study uh, TV. So I actually studied motion picture media, which was film back in the day, it wasn't TV. And the very contradictory thing is that um, I got my honors in motion picture media, majoring in production. So I think that's where my project management skills come from. Yeah. Um, but then I entered the industry, went into TV. So I didn't study TV, but uh, my, 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 my first gig was TV, which, which was really, really interesting for me. Um, then entered, entered industry and had to start making a life for myself, um, had to start working. Mm -hmm. And I spent a large part of my life, probably 14, 15 years in TV, um, which, which was a really, really incredible, just over a decade of meeting the most amazing people. Tell me about that time, you about and About that time, yeah. So, so, so my first job ever, I was a production manager for a corporate audiovisual company. Mm -hmm. So I produced um, AVs for companies like AV, City of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Around that time, um, the, I think we had just won the bid for the World Cup, the, 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 the FIFA World Cup. Yeah. Um, so I got to work with the mayor of Joburg and I, and I produced a four part documentary for the city of Joburg mm -hmm. on the construction of soccer cities. That was my first job Amazing. ever, which was really incredible. And halfway through that, I got headhunted by, which I, which I didn't know then would be the start of an incredible TV career. Again, I just, I'm like, Chris wow, wow. <laughs> um, I got headhunted by Urban Brew Studios, mm -hmm. who, um, sure, I mean, it was an incredible institute. It still is an incredible institution. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the, probably one of the biggest studio companies in this country. Joined Urban Brew as a production coordinator for YoTV, SABC One. Yeah. And I was at YoTV for five years. Um, worked my way up from production coordinator to a live TV producer. Mm -hmm. That was, Incredible. A I fun mean, working time. with, yeah, it, it was such fun. Live TV, we were on air seven days a week. Um, we worked with incredible young talent. Yeah. Um, you know, we worked with the likes of Musa and Hula Sani Sisi back yeah. in the day. Um, and, and that was incredible. I think what, what, what that did for me is also, it was also a safe environment for me to become me. You know, um, it wasn't so serious, yeah. even though we had a lot of pressure to produce. Lots of pressure, live TV. Live TV is really hectic, but that really gave me the foundation for TV. Um, I left and went back to Urban Brew twice yeah. um, because I had an opportunity. I got headhunted by FIFA to work on the Confederations <sighs> Cup and the World Cup in their broadcast department. So, yeah. so that was incredible. Um, so I worked on the Confederations Cup um, for, I think I had a two month contract in the World Cup again, and that was phenomenal. You know, working with um, local broadcast teams and international teams, yeah. the World Cup was an incredible experience for me in TV. I was the system venue logistics manager for the IBC. The IBC is the International Broadcast Center. Yeah. It's where all the feeds from all the stadiums come into one place and we distribute the feed to every single country in the world. So it was a, it was a huge responsibility. Huge responsibility. My responsibility was to manage, I think we had about 4,000 people at the IBC and I was in charge of all the air travel and local travel and accommodation logistics. Yeah. yeah. So that was, that was also very left field because I go from your TV into sports broadcast logistics I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, <clears throat> but I think one of the things that I've always believed in, think, something I've always done in my career, and you'll know this, is I've always taken opportunity with both hands and I've really just jumped into it. I've never been scared to say yes, even though I've been uncertain as to, to have the skill set. Um, am, I, am I qualified? I've never done this. Mm -hmm. Now, I arrived at your TV not having studied TV, and I'm like, I will produce this TV. And you did. And I produced it. You know? yeah. I, I ended up being a senior live TV producer when I left your TV finally. And then I had this dream after finishing the World Cup of getting into big format TV. I woke up one morning, I was like, you always see these big shows like Clash of the Choir, so think you can dance. I was like, imagine if I could work on one of those shows. Um, I had sent my CV several times to Endemol, South Africa, mm -hmm. 
Mm. Back in the day, they did Isidingo. They had the format license for Survivor. Um, and, and after four or five times, I never got a response from them. I was like, I'm not giving up. Um, and I think the fifth or sixth time I sent my CV to Endemol, I got an email mm. from a lady called Tracy, who's a very, very important person in my life. And she gave me my first job at Endemol South Africa as head of logistics for Clash of the Choirs season one. So I was in charge of all the operations and logistics for that TV show. Um, also such an incredible experience. Working with, I think also my, my gospel was coming out there because <laughs> I got to work with, you know, all the, all the choirs, um, you know, back there, I think Kaim Twetra, we had um, yeah. Judas Supuma. That first um, season was elite. It was, it was incredible. Amazing. Yeah, Bonang was our host. Um, you know, and, and I'd known these guys through my career via, via YoTV. Because at YoTV, you know, we met the most incredible people. Oh, yeah, people. everybody came <laughs> Everyone. onto YoTV. Every, every big breakfast, every Wild Dream Mega, we had to book a guest, right? Yeah. Um, so I then joined Endemol, and I worked on Clash of the Choirs, and I worked on a show called Reality Check, yeah. um, which was a show with Kanye and Bao, I think Nolte Tema back in the day, um, and Babalwa. So that was really, really amazing. And then from there, there was a position open at Rapper Blue mm. for a line producer position at So Think You Can Dance season two. I was like, wow. This format is, is owned by a company in LA, I think mm. it is. Um, what if I get this, you know? So I phoned, I think at that time I phoned or I emailed Duncan, he's the CEO of Rapper Blue. That's one thing is I'm not scared to send an email. <laughs> no, you're so, not. So, and, and I believe that if you ask, you'll never know. Mm. And I think that, that, that for me is a great principle, a great lesson in my life is that, and, and for everyone around me, everyone talks about doing something, but just ask, reach out, send the email, because you never know what might change your life in that moment. Absolutely. Um, Rapid Blue was an incredible experience. Again, live TV. I think live TV loves me. Loves you, yeah, it kind yeah. of does. And I want to do live TV again. I haven't done live TV for a while now. I've done a lot of pre-record. Mm. Um, maybe maybe we can do a live, I don't know, a food talk show. I don't know. We'll, we'll chat about it. We'll chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to do a food show like the talk, but for food. But but we'll see. We'll mm. see. But live. Or like the kitchen. Or the kitchen. Yeah. The kitchen. Kitchen. Also but incredible. live though. <laughs> Live is incredible because you it's all about the moment. You know, there's, there's there's no prep. Well, of course there's a script and there's prep, but once you live, anything can happen. And you can't over manufacture a moment. No. It just it, you have to I let it happen. It. Yes, it is what it is. Yeah. Completely. Um so so my so think and dance experience was incredible. Mm. Also the first ten years of my life I worked with SABC which, um, you know, was an incredible experience for me. Um, they, they, they still today reach the biggest audience in our country, you know. Absolutely. Yes, we talk about other, other brands and other broadcasters, and I, and I love all of you guys, but SABC still reaches mass market. Um, and I've always had a passion for mass market. Mm -hmm. um, I also think, and, and not to get into this debate now, but <laughs> um, I do think that, uh, you know, on, on, a, on a high level when it comes to entertainment and food, I don't think that we give mass market the quality entertainment we give a Netflix person or a Showmax person. So, and I, and I know we're saying the same thing here. So yeah. that's another podcast for another time. That's also <coughs> quite a yeah. revolutionary statement to make, you know, yeah. when everybody's chasing, you know, that higher LSM yeah. luxury, yeah. et cetera, to be the person that's after mass is, yeah, kind of revolutionary. Completely. Yeah. Com another Goosey's moment, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I've always had this thing that keeps bringing me back to mass market. So SABC, really, I, I'm still in contact with a few people from SABC and um, it was such an incredible journey, always going back there, whether we're broadcasting on SABC3 or SABC1, yeah. um, the SABC family are really, really cool people. Yeah. Um, so after So I Think You Can Dance, I need to get my timeline right, something very left field happened in, in my career, but somewhere in between that I also worked for... Um, SABC2, I produced a whole series of Open Varsity. Mm -hmm. uh, it was those lectures in the afternoons, I think during oh, exams, yeah, where the I lecture used to those. go, let's go through you know, your, your, your math exams. And there was English and there was science. So I think I produced about 500 episodes of that. Sure. It was insane, yeah. So I think we produced like a year's worth of content. And then something very interesting happened. I, I, I always have, and again, I believe that, uh, you know, whether you believe in God or the universe, but for me, God, he always puts these things inside of me mm. and then I have to act. Um, 
And I woke up one morning and I was like, I wonder if I can do something in marketing. Like I've done TV now, but I wonder if I would fit into a marketing company. So I just Google marketing jobs and something comes up in Pretoria um, with RG. I think the company is called RGB Marketing. Mm -hmm. I I know the owner's name is Jeff. Yeah. A, a fantastic individual. And you know, I got the job. <clears throat> I got the job at RGB Marketing. Um, also moved to Pretoria because I'm like, I'm not driving from Durban to Pretoria yeah, every day. You can't. Moved to Pretoria. And I think I was at RGB Marketing for two or three months. Mm. And the owner of their company's wife was a lady called Jonah Mohoshi. Miss South Africa. Miss South Africa, former brand manager, Sundowns. Um, sure, it's such, such an incredible person who really changed. She, she really was the starting point for me of my love for brand management, brand strategy. Mm. Um, so I kind of pivoted from RGB and I was like, I want to work with Joan. Yeah. Um, and I worked with Joan Mohoshi for a year, managing her PR. At that time, she was a judge from South Africa. So mm. I got to work with Sun International and I did all her brand management activities. Sure. And that was just okay, I was in TV, now I'm in brand, but again, I was so open to new experience. Mm. Um, I always think I've had a bit of a natural ability inside of me for brand. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I always say, I think I'm the most unqualified person sometimes, but I'm the most qualified in terms of life experience. You yeah. know, I've sat in so many boardrooms in my life um, and, and I've met so many amazing marketing and branding people and I go, wow, I wish I knew some of the lingo, you know, but my life experience, I think that, 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 that value is worth so much. I'm not going to say more, so, but it's worth so much, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Jaro Mohoshi, brand management for a year, that was incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then shortly after that, I kind of took a bit of a sabbatical, um, two, two, three month break. Mm-hmm. And that's where my real food journey began. So, so after this big break, yeah. um, I got a call. I don't know how the call happened, actually. But I got a call from a gentleman called Jay Something. He's a lead singer on Mikasa. Mm. And he said to me, I believe that you're a TV guy. I want to produce a cooking show. I'm like, okay. I've never really thought about doing food, but I can do the TV part. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's meet for a coffee. Um, so anyways, he set up a coffee in, in Parkes at Vovotello back in the day. And we met and I said to him, yeah, I mean, this is like the standard. How did he find you? I don't know. Oh, I do know. So one of my very good friends who I studied with, Leanne, mm-hmm. um, she currently owns, I would say, probably the largest commercial company in Johannesburg mm-hmm. um, called Sariti Films. Mm-hmm. They also produce drama series. Yeah. You, you, you know, they, they produce drama series from Zanzi Magic, mm-hmm. Multi-Choice. So I think that time Leanne was shooting a music video for Mikasa. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and Jay and Leanne had been talking I think about a TV show. And I was like, oh, you should phone my friend. I know the person who does that TV. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's the TV guy. So that's how the connection happened. Um, you know, I, I didn't know, and, and apologies to Jay, but I didn't know much about Jay when, yeah. when, when we connected then. I obviously had to reach it. I was like, okay, this is me, Cass, this is amazing. So we met for a coffee um, early 2014. Sure. That's, that's, like, that's 10 years ago. That's 10 years ago. That's 10 Papa. years ago. It's been a 10-year journey in food. So mm. this is 10 years, actually, in sure. food. So it's so, so quite significant, actually, that maybe we're having this conversation. Just realize that. <laughs> that is amazing. So um, you meet Jay. I meet you guys Jay. talk about a TV show. He wants How to do a TV it show. I said to him, OK, I can do the TV show. He said, oh, I have you know, a guy and a camera. I'm like, no, no, we need like a technical crew. We need three <laughs> cameras. So <laughs> we need three cameras, not one camera, Jay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're this person. Yeah. Um, I can't think of anything that you do and <laughs> you don't do big. I love yeah. this about you. If you're yeah. going to do it, you're going to do it right. Yeah. And you're going to give it all of you. Yeah, yeah and, and, and it's, it's, it's sometimes played in my favor. Sometimes it doesn't. But I think it's my it's my thing. It's, who you it's are. my thing to go. What are we doing? It has to be big, and <laughs> we've got to do everything. Yeah. <laughs> so met Jay. He had a few brands that were interested in producing a show from Unilever. We met with the brands. Mm-hmm. In 2014, I produced his first cooking show called Someone's Cooking from Zanzi Magic, um, and and I did the show as an independent producer, so through my own production company, which is also quite a milestone for me. Um, end of 2014, after the show went on air. We started getting all these questions from brands going, can Jay come do a demo? We're going to do campaigns. 
So Jay said to me, well, do you want to be my food brand manager? You know, music, I have a team, mm. but do you want to manage food? I was like, okay, I don't know what it's like to be a food brand, yeah. uh, a food brand manager, but so. 2015, we actually did two things. So we, so we carried on with the production company. We produced a few more TV shows for SABC One, Mzanzi Magic. We did a show for Vuzu back in the day, SABC Three. And then I also managed all his food activities in 2015. And that really was the, the, the very crucial, incredibly important starting point for food for me. Mm. I got to meet the most amazing brand managers, marketing managers. Um, so 2015 to 2018, I managed Jay something, all his food activities. We published a cookbook, opened a restaurant. Um, and that, I think those three years, I was also introduced to well over 50, 60 brands across all the biggest stables in this country. Yeah, so and that's how you meet, became that food guy. That's how I became that food guy. But that food guy has a very specific story because mm. in 2018, so I spent time with Jay for three years, 2018, um, a friend of mine said to me, do you know, like, you're, you're that food guy. Like, what do you mean I'm that food guy? I'm just, I'm a brand manager. Like, no, no, like, if you need anything in food, you are the guy to go to in food. Absolutely. And I had a moment. And I said to myself, what if I, what if I take all the experience, all my TV, all my brand experience, all my experience I've had with, with you know, home cooks and chefs and brands, and what if I open a marketing agency? And, and that's where we're at today. 2018, that Fuga group was born. Um, it's also the first year we got our first contract with Delicious Festival as the brand management agency. Um, so 2018 was a very, very crucial year. And I must acknowledge in this conversation, the people also believed in me because when, when I started that Fuga, there was no capital, there was no money, there was no real opportunity to go, well, I'm leaving and I'm going to an opportunity. Mm. I woke up one morning and had to figure it out. I was like, yeah. okay, well, I'm a ground zero. I have a cool name, but I need a brand. I need a communication strategy. You know, in two days, I was like, I need a plan. I need a project <laughs> plan. Yeah. And so, so 2018 was the start of the Fuga Group. Our first contract was um, brand management and strategy for Delicious Festival, which currently is the largest uh, music and food festival across Africa. Mm -hmm. um, we turned 10 last year. In the last six years, I have spent growing the Fuga Group, which again, in the beginning, was this very organic decision. And now it really has become around strategy, um, making strategic moves, um, you know, what silos do we want to open? So, so now, yes, there has to be a business plan because the mm -hmm. company's grown, but I still haven't lost the very special thing inside of me that, 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 that I always rely on to make decisions. You know, I can see a, a client can offer me a budget, uh, someone can give me a contract, and I can make sense of it financially and if it's viable. Mm -hmm. But my intuition is my biggest sense of direction and compass in my entire life. Yeah. It's never let me down. It's never let me down when I've come to hire people, when I've come to accept client contracts. I don't also just accept any work. Mm -hmm. For me, it has, to, it has to talk to my values. It has to talk to my, my spirit. It has to sit well here. Then I can look at the numbers and look at the contract. Yeah. But I think it's one thing that, that has always kept me strong and solid okay. is, that, is that inner core. It has. And, and yeah. tell me about your relationship with Delicious, um, everything that you've done with yes. Delicious. I mean, such incredible work. Yeah. Um, like you said, the biggest food and music festival yeah. on the continent. What's it like working with them and what, what exactly is it that you do there? Do, yeah. so, so, so the relationship has grown so much. Um, from 2018, we started out as a brand management agency. So the custodians of the brand, how the visuals look, how it sits, how the brand shows up. Um, with partners on TV, um, you know, on radio and social media. And over the years, the relationship has now grown into us being the lead marketing agency for all the DSV Delicious Festival. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the relationship has grown so much. Working with a team, I want to I wanna say it's like black and white because it's yeah. wild. It's a wild project to work on, um, but, but it's family. You know, um, everything, everyone I interact with through that Fuga 
um, clients, delicious festival for me or my family. You know what? What, what I do is, is is it's my life. I don't at five o'clock close my laptop and then go back to my life. What I do is my life. Yeah. This is it for me. There is nothing else. So working with delicious is um, intense. <laughs> I can imagine. Very, very intense. I can imagine. Um, I've learned so much from all the individuals, from the founders, Tom and Lloyd, all the way through to production, through to the marketing, through to my marketing team, through to outsource PR, um, suppliers. You know, we have an incredible family at Delicious. Um, and, it, and Delicious has really also given us a platform to interact with brands. Mm. Because I think network is an incredibly important thing. Um, yes, you can have the skill. Yes, you can have the knowledge, but you've also got to have doors open for you. Sure. Um, and then you have to deliver, of course. So mm -hmm. Delicious has been incredible because we get to meet incredible brands and we get to interact with amazing people. What's been the best part of working at and with Delicious? I think the main event is always, is always the best part because yeah. you work so hard for four or five months. Um, you get tickets sold, you launch your marketing campaigns, you do a media strategy. So those two days, um, I always make a point every single Delicious to do a full walk by myself throughout the whole festival. And I get to buy my Hemel Slash and I do my Dumbolo burgers. And I get to see people that I've seen for the past five years at the festival. Um, you know, from, from 2018, 2019. So 2018, we brand managed. 2019, I did two pop-up restaurants for Delicious with Jay Something and Sarah Graham. Yeah. And as a relationship has grown, you, you get to know a lot of people in the festival. Yeah. So the main event is, is magical. Seeing all your hard work come together. Mm -hmm. It's like a book. You know, yeah. you're testing recipes, you're writing recipes. But as soon as you see that final end, end asset, that final end project, it's just, it's, it's very, very rewarding. I can imagine. It's very rewarding, yeah. Yeah. So you, you've had <laughs> such an impact on some of our favorite brands. I mean, I mm. think every single brand that exists in this country, yeah. you've kind of worked on in, in some capacity. What has been your favorite brand wow. slash campaign that you worked on and what did you love so much about working with yeah. that brand oh i have so many <laughs> <laughs> okay give so me many. three i i have so many and and for very different reasons yeah the 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 you know i think sassel we we joined the sassel family about a year and a half ago yeah that has been never my wildest dream would I have thought that that fuga even stands a chance of heading up the food marketing and the product development for Sassel South Africa, you know, so. So tell me exactly what do you do there? What we do Develop, there, yeah. um, So, so, so we entered a tender year and a half ago and Sassel had recently launched their internal product development division in Sassel. Okay. Um, so, so we got the, we, we won the tender against 12 or 13 other companies. Amazing. And we get to head up all the development for all the convenience stores. So all their hot meals, they're ready to go. So we get to develop all the flavors. That's a big, recipes. big project. It's big, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, if you think of Sassel, they have plus minus 400 stores. So we get to develop, so we get to influence, not only do we get to influence what people eat, what flavors we put in, we, or, or all the flavors that go into all the four courts. And then at the same time, we get to market all that. So we also had a food marketing. So sure. anything that has food content in it, we're responsible whether it be a billboard, social media, and activation. So Cecil definitely won. Um, Disney Channel definitely, and I, yeah. I mean, it has to be a favorite. Yeah. I know the team always say Disney is our favorite project. <laughs> and I don't forget about the other clients. <laughs> we, and, and we really love all of our clients. But work, work, working with Disney, I re, even remember my first email when, or an email from Walt Disney to say that, you know, you had landed your, a contract for our first TV show last year. Um, and we're about to form our second one now. That was so surreal because yeah. we've grown up with these brands, you know, we really have grown up with these brands. And more than that, we bring a local narrative and a local script to Disney. So for me to see local content on an international platform, you know, the show gets distributed, I think, through five or six different territories across the world. But to see South African kids and South African food and a South African story on an international platform, Amazing. for me, it's, it's, it's purpose driven. I'm like, tick, done. We are showcasing this country overseas. And then I'm um, trying to go another campaign. There are so many in my head, but there, 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 there are some work that we've done with Tenderson Broccoli, there's some work we've done with the Killer Rice. Mm. Um, we work with a lot of ingredient brands, you know, mm. we work with rice, we work with broccoli. We recently just um, pitched and we won the contract 
to head up research for SAMAC, which is the South African Macadamia. Oh, yeah. So we are leading all the research for the macadamia in South Africa. And that is so interesting. It's so incredibly interesting to see who consumes it. Um, at the moment, you know, we export more than 98% of our macadamias internationally. I'm like, give us our own macadamias, yeah. you know. So hopefully through research, we can have a bit of an impact. Mm. Um, and we can also grow our, our, our local economy. Um, but yeah, those, those I think are some of my, some of my favorites. That's oh, really special. Yeah. Well, now that I have you here, I'm obviously <laughs> going to ask this question. Influencer marketing. Mm. Um, I think one of the, the first times I was paid to talk about a product yeah. was because of you, yeah. um, through working with you. Yeah. So tell me, um, let's chat a bit about influencer marketing. Um, because you've done such extensive yeah. work with brands, yeah. um, the influencer, the brand, the agency, the campaign, how does it all come together? Yeah, yeah I mean, the influencer... Um, layer or segment or silo in South Africa is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a very, very important part of what we do now. I've met a few brands in my career that have said to me, yeah, we're not sure if influencers, you know, have, a, have an impact. It's probably the most important thing because the only, it's the only way you can put a human voice mm -hmm. to a campaign or it's to a product. It's word of mouth. Right? It's word of mouth. On a big, exactly. big scale. It's amplification of word of mouth. Yeah. 100%. You should join that food guy as a strategist, please. <laughs> do you have the money? I do, I do. To pay my salary. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a plan. I'll send my CV. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so influencer marketing is a very important part of what we do on a nano, a macro or a macro level. Mm. Um, I would say that 99% of our brands use influencers um, and it depends on the campaign, it depends on the objectives, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, we currently head up marketing for a brand called Elon. They have about, I think, 700,000 followers on Instagram. They're a glow, they're the most Instagrammable cafe in the world, that's their yes, claim. Yes, yes, So it's we so launched pretty. their first restaurant, yeah. yes. And we're about to launch the second restaurant in Menon in June. Nice. But that's going to be cool. Um, for instance, that brand influences a very, very important part of what that brand does. Mm. So we'll, we'll decide what the campaign is, you know, whether we're promoting milkshake and um, milk cake Mondays. We'll get together, we'll curate four or five influencers, suit that narrative. Mm. You know, I think, obviously, we want to make sure that the connection is as organic as possible. Mm. So you don't want to put an influencer onto a brand and that influencer doesn't want to drink. Yeah. or if it doesn't even eat the thing. So we'll then scope out uh, a group of influencers, we'll apply that to the campaign, we'll do a briefing, and those influencers will have their KPIs and their objectives. So they'll need to come up with organic content. We, we really believe in more organic influencer content. Mm -hmm. I think the very curator, the over curator content is doing maybe slightly not so well at yeah, the moment. At you can see moment, from yeah. TikTok that the definitely more organic placement works. Um, not saying that visuals shouldn't be. I'm, I'm a, I love beautiful visuals. Yeah. I love incredibly good looking images and mood boards. Um, we'll get there and then give a brief to an influencer and the influencer will execute that scope according to the campaign. But influencers, I think also the 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 way in which influencers work is changing. We're maybe macros was a big thing back in the day. And I'm not saying that macros don't work. I'm just saying that I think um, more of an authentic narrative is important. So, you know, if Machal, you know, drinks water and you're promoting water, then you must be drinking water in your normal life, yeah. you know? But if you don't drink water and it's not really, hydration isn't important to you, mm. then my heart shouldn't be doing the campaign. So I've seen a big move with brands at the moment, really attaching themselves to influencers that already use the product um, and, and I think that's where influencer marketing is going, definitely more organic and definitely more authentic. I think we all, somewhere inside of us, just want more, um, I think we want to be more authentic. Yeah, we want, to, um, we want, we want honesty. Real, we want honesty. Yeah. Um, and I can see that through marketing and brands and brands are there as well. It's a way in which you know, you're going to bring together your community, right? Mm. It's through authentic storytelling. Yeah. And do you think um, influencer marketing will ever die? I think it won't die, but I think it will change like anything, right? So I think in terms of media strategy, if you think of out of home and radio and TV and influencers, um, I think certain things become bigger than others depending on the season. Yeah. Um, naturally, the way in which we consume um, entertainment and consume marketing will change. Mm -hmm. We saw from COVID, you know, that billboards became 
obviously would have zero yeah. impact. Mm -hmm. Radio and TV became more important. So I think everything has a season. Mm -hmm. I, think influ I think the word influencer might change, mm -hmm. potentially. You know, where, where that figure, we call them advocates. Um, like that. Yeah, we call them friends of the brand, yeah. which I think sounds better than influencer. So I think influencers will always be around, but the form will change over the years. And what is your favorite social media platform? Ooh, if I you had to pick one. I want to be careful here because one of my very <laughs> good friends is the marketing manager of TikTok. But I can honestly say that I was a big Instagram user, I think, the past two, three years. Mm -hmm. And the past year, TikTok has been my go-to. I yeah. absolutely adore TikTok. It's my, you know, I remember watching, I know, Days of Our Lives and Born the Beautiful growing <laughs> up, but TikTok is that for me. Now we're getting long format series on TikTok. We're getting people share, you know, pieces of their life which you're not going to see on TV. Mm. TikTok for me is the most authentic platform out there. Instagram is still very curated. Twitter, or at least X, is, is, is my least favorite. Um, I don't think I actually, if, I, I think I go into just maybe once a month. Um, or if I wanna if I wanna see newsworthy stuff yeah. and it's immediate, then I'm like, okay, what are the ex people saying? But TikTok <laughs> yeah. is cool and it feels natural and yeah. when well, I it think TikTok, I think yeah. democracy. Yeah, I think anyone yes. can make anything out 100%. of TikTok, which is amazing. Yeah, completely. TikTok I think also allows you you, you to be you. Mm. You know, you don't have to put a pretense on your face on. Just be completely. you. Um, and I know they've been under fire in other territories, but really TikTok for me is the only platform that also doesn't, I mean, and not to get into the conversation of what it does to mental health and and mm. and, but TikTok for me doesn't raise my anxiety. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where on oh, Instagram, yeah. I do find myself looking at content going, oh, but you know, I should have a, maybe a better beach body yeah. or what about this? Yeah. TikTok, I just feel at home. I'm like, okay. I'm like the lady buying a hot dog feeding her family, because that's what I do. Mm. <laughs> I hear you. So I love TikTok. I hear you. So back to that food guy. Yeah. Um, you guys do so, so much. Um, and, mm. and I'm guessing, you know, you must have an incredible team to help you mm. do all these things. Yeah. How do you go about putting together a team that's also going to deliver on the promises that you make? Yeah. I like what you just said, because mm. I think one of the challenges I have had in, early, in the early days of that food guy was fulfilling the promises. And yeah. the promises we take, I think we take quite seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so putting together a team has been a very organic process again. And I think I've ebbed and flowed depending on what we needed the company. So, you know, the Fuga started with just Dale, um, then Funega, who's a very important person in my life, in my, in my personal life. She's also my business partner. We studied together 20 years ago. Um, she joined that Fuga, and I think she's the only person on this planet who is willing to entertain the madness, the storms, the happy moments, the smiles, because she's been through it all in that Fuga with me. She, she's probably, she's my rock. Anything that I'm uncertain about, anything that I maybe need a bit of advice on, she's my go-to. So Funega and I run, run, run their Fuga group. And then the team have organically been um, hired, you know, or contracted. And it, and it really has been, because if I think about everyone in that Fuga group, no, and I want to I think about this, but every single person in our current team I've met in my life over the past 20 years. Mm. So for instance, our chief designer I met at Samsung, she was a, a designer for, for, for Samsung. She joined that Fuga. You know, I think about Elise, um, she's now head of innovation operations. She manages and operations is a huge thing for that food guy. Mm. As you can imagine, you know, development for, for, for a Sassel and we do two year planning. So we come up with 30 recipes for two years sure. and she has to manage that. She was my head of food for J brand. So yeah. everyone, Funega, my business partner, I've known for 21 years this year. So everyone has been connected. Um, and I do believe that God has introduced me to the people I needed for this mission. And I don't call that Fuga group a company, it's a mission. So everyone has been given to me for, for a very specific reason, I believe. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that you have people that support yeah. you, but also share you know, the kind of vision that you yeah. have for that food guy. Completely. I'm so incredibly grateful for that, if I can just say that, you know, because I think one of one of my challenges sometimes is I have a lot in my head and my vision is here yeah. and translating that isn't the easiest thing. Mm. 
Um, you know, I, I also recently, about two years ago, took up food photography. So in between my busy life, I try and, I try and lead shoots with Karabo, who heads up studio. But friends, if I look at someone like Karabo Yasiro, who heads up digital design, they just get it. You know, yeah. I can say, guys, I want to shoot flowers and this is the tone. I want to shoot a tennis in broccoli and this is yeah. the tone. And Karabo will come with this entire mood board. And I'm like, that's exactly what I thought we should do. So I think finding your tribe, finding your people mm. is, is such a big blessing. And you need that. Yeah. You need that to grow. Yeah. yeah, it's a hard thing. But once you, you hit it. that sweet spot, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, speaking of work, let's talk now work-life balance. Yes. What do you do when you're not working? Do you ever rest? I, I do you have I it? don't know if I'm the right person to ask this question. <laughs> I know you <laughs> no, work a lot, but um, what does rest lot. look like? Yes. What does rest look like to me? So uh, I, I try and cook, mm. but I can honestly say to you, I do not cook more than probably three or four times a year because yeah. um, I'm always tasting a menu. Otherwise, there's always a friend who's cooking for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, your Instagram, once I see your stories, I just know it's food. food in it has to be. Yeah. It's something that I'm eating. So work-life balance for me is I love travel, mm. um, even though I work on travel. But for me, meeting new people and being in new environments is my rest. So for me, being in a new conversation or being, even if I go to Cape Town 20 times a year, I will go to a new restaurant and I love dining alone. It's my thing. I love lunching alone, taking pictures. I do a full on shoot when I go out. I do my you thing. Do. And I'm sure the whole restaurant is like, is, like who is this person? Why is he doing that? Um, so for me, I, 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 for me, rest doesn't look like sitting on the couch doing nothing. Mm. Even though I love an afternoon nap on a Sunday, it's one of my favorite things. But rest for me is traveling. Rest is meeting new people. And, and rest is music. Music is, in, again, and, and specifically gospel music, is an incredibly important part of, of mm. just, just giving me a breath. Yeah. yeah. So for someone that's young, they're listening, um, they know that they love marketing, they love food, um, they are creative, and they look at your career mm. and they kind of want to emulate it. What mm. would you say? I mean, I know we can't give like the exact blueprint mm. or like a map, but where do they even begin? What would you say mm. are the steps to take in trying to build this mm. incredible career like the one that you have? I think it's even a combination of things. Um, and, and I hope one day there can be a blueprint because I think yeah. people do deserve a bit of a plan to go on. Well, okay, this is how you do it. Yeah. I think it's a combination of things. I think a plan and a roadmap is important. Mm -hmm. I've always been a roadmap person. From the time I was in university, I used to plot out my next year. So I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. I will use my December to plan my next 12 months or 24 months. Mm -hmm. um, at that Fugai, I constantly know what my next is for the next two years. And I'm always going to be that person, right? Because I'm the vision, I'm the person that needs to understand what the next is. So mm -hmm. a roadmap and a plan. It's like driving from here to Limpopo and you don't have a map on and you've never been down the route. Yeah. How do you know where to go? You know, mm -hmm. be on a gravel road, which is the wrong direction. So True. I think direction is important. And that comes from self. It doesn't come from anyone else, I believe. That comes from inside of you. It comes from a combination and a collective of lived experiences and something your intuition, your heart, and your mind is giving you. Mm. I think the second thing is network and, and making friends in the industry. Mm. Um, I think it's very, uh, we, we really are nothing without people around us. So I could have achieved nothing without the people around, whether it be someone at a brand that believed in me, whether it be my own team members. So definitely I think connections, um, the social aspect of what you do is incredibly important. Mm. Because um, I think if you have the roadmap in place and I meet Machal and I know Machal can open a door for me, I have my roadmap ready. I really believe you have to be ready for opportunity. I think often people don't see opportunity and they don't take up opportunity because they don't see it. Mm -hmm. It's not part of your plan. I think there are many things you can pass by in life and not see it sure. if you're not ready and you're not present. So I've really taught myself to be, and the third thing for me is to be awake and present. Because sometimes you're not awake in a moment, you're not present in a conversation. Mm. Well, Khal can say to me four times, you should open that fuga, you should open that fuga. But if I wasn't awake and present in that one moment, I would it. have never done this. Yeah. I would have never thought of a marketing agency specializing in food and beverage. So being, so being present um, is, is incredible. And I think I become the older I'm getting, I think I'm old, old. I turned 40 <laughs> recently. Um, 
But the older I'm getting, the more present I'm becoming. So I'm listening more. Mm. You know? Yes, I can talk and I can direct and I can lead, but I think I'm also a really good listener. Let me tell you yeah. one of the, the things that you taught me um, very early on in my career. I think it's even before the book came out. Um, you said to me, they are, I don't even know if you remember it, but like it's stuck in my head. I repeat no. it all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a paying gig and a paving gig. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's not about, you yeah. know, the dollar signs or the rands behind yeah. that gig. Yeah. It's about what else you can get from this gig. It's, it's paving the way because you're going to yeah. meet someone important. Um, yeah. You're going to get incredible experience. Yeah. Um, you're going to put yourself out there. So, yeah, yeah. thank you for that. A hundred percent. Yeah, that has served me over yeah. and over a million times yeah. over just knowing that um sometimes it's not about what i mm. get from the situation it's from what yeah. i bring um and like trying yeah. to extract value um from just showing yeah. up yeah 100 percent. You, you you actually mentioned something that's quite quite important in my life if i think about some of the tv people i'm working now on our new disney show mm. you know I, if i think about even if i have to mention names but noctula and yolanda yeah. yolanda was my production coordinator in the mall mm. 15 years ago noctula i hired as a director in 2014 on jay's show um if i think about that for me i believe my sole purpose in that few guy is not for me to gain of course we need to live and we have to make money yeah. but i really wanted to create a platform for other people to shine so for me, it's extremely relevant for me to provide a platform for me to see my team grow, you know? Yeah. For me, yeah, I, th I think my, my, my growth is, is, is good. I'm a, I'm a very active grower, right? So if I want to open a company, I open a company yeah. and I make it happen. But how beautiful is it to see the people around you mm. also, you know, take, right. take their place, be incubated and also grow. So um, I love that. And I think I love the paving because I think often in life we all have different lived experiences. We've all come from different, um, you know, situations in our lives. And sometimes people don't have the paved path. Mm. And I think you can meet one person who can change your life. So, so I think definitely choosing the, 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 the paved is a priority because the payment will come. It will, it will come the eventually. Will it come. always follows. If you're authentic and true to yourself and you, and you, and you pave a way for others, um, meaning not being selfish, being open, you know, putting people into opportunities, you'll be blessed, you'll be good. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, we, we chat about, you know, everything that is great about working in this yeah. industry, but there are many, many challenges. Yeah. Tell me what has been some of the greatest challenges along the way and how you overcame them. Um, sure, yeah. I mean, sometimes I want to say more <laughs> challenges than wins. Yeah. Because I think people only see the wins. People mm -hmm. see the awards, they see the sales, yeah. but they don't see. So I think definitely, I think capital and cash flow has been one of the biggest challenges for us. Mm -hmm. A new agency in the industry, we're still fairly new. Six years is not old. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, and, and whether, you know, I, I don't like comparing us to maybe the larger agencies globally, mm -hmm. but they come with dollars, they come with euros. Yeah. We're a prior South African agency and here we are, you know, no capital trying to make it work. So, so we've definitely had incredible support there. So how we overcame that challenge was an angel investor. So when I say, you know, your network is important, you will find there has to be someone in your circle or someone that you meet in your life that will help you in some in some form. So definitely capital and cash flow has been a bit of a challenge, especially in the beginning days of that mm -hmm. guy. But we had an angel investor, I mean, people who believed in us. Amazing. All you needed is one person to believe in you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm forever grateful to, to Lloyd for, for really just, you know, he's the first person I went to. I said, I want to start an agency, but I, I, I think I only have like 7,000 rand to start. Can you help me? The brand is going to cost 40. And he, he didn't hesitate. The next morning he was like, I'm in. Amazing. So you need people who believe in you. Some other challenges, um, sure. I think, I think another big challenge for me perhaps has also been getting into the right rooms, you know, because I think um, and, and, and in any industry, but in marketing, there are specific, maybe even say circles or clicks mm -hmm. or people that only work with certain people. So we've had, we've had a lot of proving. So we'll take on projects for um, a low cost or low budget or do work for free, which Paving we still the way. do. Yeah. And we still do it to prove to clients and prove to brands that we are worthy 
of getting the larger projects. So yeah. I don't think proving your worth in marketing or at least in, 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 in business ever stops. I think you always have to prove in yourself. In life. Actually. In life. Yeah. It's, it's a good lesson for life. But we do overcome it. I think we overcome the, 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 the proving and getting to rooms by just showing up. We show up every single day, produce incredible work, and we work incredibly hard. And we're going to continue doing that so people see us. And what's next? Yeah. Um, for Dale, that's done just about everything. What is next? What is next? What's the next frontier that yeah. you want to take on? Yeah. Um, and I know you win. It is. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I, th I think for that food guy specifically, obviously marketing, we want to grow an agency. We want to quadruple what we're doing at the moment. Um, innovation, continue growing. Um, I think the, the, the one big aspect we really want to focus on the next few years is TV. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a two-part dream. Um, the, the, the first part of that dream is to launch that Fugai TV, mm. which will be a YouTube channel, um, and Karaba Hitter Studio is currently working on that plan. And the second one is to do more meaningful, entertaining video content, whether yeah. it be content for Netflix or Showmax. But part of our internal mandate at that Fugai is to archive South African African food stories. Yeah whether that be through a documentary series, whether it be through uh, you know, showcasing chefs or home cooks, um, we have a responsibility at the Food Guy in 100 years to make sure that our food stories, our flavors um, are, are documented and archived somewhere. And you can do that through video. So that, that's our next big mission. And we'll get there you one will. step at a time. Yeah, you we'll will. If, if anybody can, it's you, Dale. <laughs> yes. um, thank you so much for today. Thank you. thank you so much for taking this time to have this thank conversation you. with us. I've thoroughly enjoyed thank speaking you. with you. you. Um, and yeah, congratulations on everything. I can't wait to see what the next 10 years of that food guy is going to be. Thank you. I also really just appreciate the time to reflect. Mm. I think often, you know, life, life is quite busy and we're shooting a TV show and we have campaigns yeah. launching. And when you, when, you, when you pop me a message and you invited me, I thought, okay, just a moment to sit and talk, yeah. which you don't often get to do. So, so thank you to you, and I'm so incredibly proud of, of this and of, of, of your entire brand. Thank you. Thank you, friend. And thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. This has been Chefing Beyond the Kitchen. Hope you enjoyed this conversation. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.